Good day, good day, good people. It's your boy, Mr. E, and welcome to the latest episode of Most Wanted. The films that we can't wait to see coming to the screens this May, and we think you should be looking out for them as well. Now, if you live in the UK, the date to remember is May the 17th. May the 17th, because according to the government's roadmap out of lockdown, that is the day indoor cinemas will be allowed to reopen. That's right, you can get back to your local cinema or your local chain, get back into the popcorn, the I like my popcorn obviously mixed sweet and salted with a tango blast and some minstrel inside. Anyway, indoor cinemas reopen in the UK on May the 17th, meaning you can get back to the multiplexes and see those big screen hits on the actual big screen. Now, absolutely nothing against watching things at home, but for films, cinema is always going to be my first choice. So. Needless to say, I'm very, very happy about this. So, taking all that into account, what does May have in store for us? Well, we have some big hitters. Firstly, we have Free Guy. Now, Free Guy stars Ryan Reynolds and Jodie Comer. Now, Ryan is a NPC, a non-playable character in a video game, uh, which means basically he has a routine he has to follow. He's not the main character or anything, just goes about doing the regular thing every day and he gets a bit fed up of his regular routine and tries to break out of that and actually be some sort of hero. Uh, now Jodie Comer is a real life person but she has an avatar in the game and she meets up with um, Ryan Reynolds character NPC and they end up in a mission trying to save the game world from destruction. Now you all know when it comes to Ryan Reynolds what to expect. He's kind of carved his own niche out in Hollywood. He's got his own section of the market where you know he's going to be charming, obviously the ladies love him, what he looks like, and um, he's going to be funny, he's a very funny guy, and witty, and there's got to be lots of action and lots of laughs in this film. So for me, the X Factor about this film is going to be Jodie Comer. Now when I first saw Jodie on TV in Killing Eve, one season, I got halfway through the season, I had to pause the TV and actually say, hold on a minute, who is she? Because she is absolutely phenomenal in Killing Eve, just from that first season I saw her, I had to find out who she was. This is going to be her official first big screen leading role. It is a comedy, um, an action comedy anyway, and she's playing, going up against one of the best known comedy action stars being Ryan Reynolds. So is she going to hold her own? Let's see. I think, personally, there's a good chance that she's going to steal the show. Um, Jody, from what I've seen from her, Jodie Comer is extremely talented. Um, we'll see how funny she is in this film, I guess, but she shows some quirks from the TV show of Killing Eve. So we'll see if she can translate all that goodness into big screen magnetism. Let's see how good she's going to be. Can she hold her own against Ryan Reynolds? I think she's the X-Factor in this film, and I think if she's good, this film's going to be totally off the chain. If not, it's Ryan Reynolds, so you know it's going to be at least good. He doesn't really make bad films. So that's definitely one to watch out for. Free Guy coming this May, in the cinemas, lots of laughs, action, get your popcorn, this is going to be definitely one that you're not going to want to miss. Okay, so moving on, we're going to come back to the small screen, and I say small screen, I mean everyone's favourite home streaming service, Netflix, well until Disney take them over anyway, but no, Netflix is still, at the moment, number one streaming service, and even though they put out some questionable films, Every now and again, they do hit it and hit it right. So, they've got a big screen director, in Zack Snyder, fresh off his Justice League success. Yes, it was a success because everybody I've spoken to has really loved that film and enjoyed the um, Snyder cut of the film, including myself. So, fresh off that success, he has this film now called Army of the Dead, coming to Netflix this May as well. Now, Army of the Dead is a sequel of sorts. He did the Dawn of the Dead in 2004, which is a remake of George Romero's film from the 90s, but he made his version of Dawn of the Dead in 2004, and this is kind of a sequel, so 17 years later, it's kind of a sequel to Doom to that, and I mean, if you are tired of zombies, I mean, we've got lots of the zombie shows, we've seen zombies everywhere, but Zack has decided he's going to try something new with zombies, and we have hybrid zombies, we've got animals, mixed crossbreed zombies, and we've also got smart zombies hence the army in the title now we have a chain of command where we have top zombies and minion zombies and everything in between and they're organized hence they're an army 
So this is actually terrifying. They're not slow walking around looking for brains. No, they're actually smart, they're organized, they can move faster, they can plan, strategize. So this is absolutely terrifying. But it's gonna be great. If you want something fresh or zombie wise, this is gonna be the one for you in Army of the Dead. Now, the story is um, a, a local gangster, etc., asks these guys to go into a vault, an abandoned vault in Las Vegas, a safe at the bottom of this casino full of a couple million um, dollars, wants them to go in, get the money, and get out. Easy. If not for the zombie apocalypse going on around them. So this team, including characters like um, Dave Batista and um, Omar Hardwick, um, they come together and form this ragtag team of mercenaries, fully armed, and they're going in, going to get the money, and going to get out, hopefully, alive, and taking out the zombies along the way. Now, Zack Snyder is known for his slow motion, so we can guarantee there's going to be some super slow motion zombie assassinations in this film. I mean, it's going to be stylish, it's going to be slick, and if you like watching zombies get massacred, I can almost guarantee you this is going to satisfy that itch. There's going to be zombie deaths galore. I don't know how many characters are going to survive, I don't really know that yet, but it's definitely going to be a ride and a half. It's going to be um, over the top from violence and gore. So if you're not into that sort of thing, then you probably shouldn't watch this. But it's going to be, I reckon it's going to be a couple of laughs in there as well, in my opinion. There'll be a couple of laughs. And it's going to be actually quite an entertaining ride. Who gets the money? Who survives? How many zombies get killed? And in what, what's going to be the best zombie kill? You watch stuff like a Zombie Land, uh, where they had a competition about zombie kills. I think it's going to be a bit like that with um, who has the best zombie kill uh, in the most stylish manner. But yeah, Army of the Dead, really looking forward to that one. Coming this May to Netflix, it's going to be a good one. So definitely, definitely watch out for that one. And third, finally, but not least obviously, we have Spiral. Spiral stars Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. Now, Chris Rock is a detective who's out for a serial killer. Yeah, you might say, what's the difference about that? What's so new and innovative about that? Well, Spiral is actually from the Book of Saw. Yes, Saw, the legendary horror series, and which had the killer, Jigsaw. Now, in Spiral, we believe that there's a copycat of Jigsaw of sorts, who started his own legacy and starts tormenting Chris Rock and his father, Samuel Jackson, who's a retired police detective. And what we know we're gonna get from Saw that travels into Spiral is traps. So it's always been about the innovative, innovative traps and the uh, most horrible, wicked ways of killing people while giving them moral dilemmas, etc. So there's gonna be traps in this, traps galore, some very sick, twisted ones. There's gonna be gore, unfortunately another gory film, but don't worry about that. But it's also gonna be a who who done it? Because there's always normally one person on the good side who's actually a double agent actually on the bad guy's side as well so who's it gonna be don't know but this is gonna be a really fun whodunit gore fest serial killer hunt down detective type show um film sorry um it's gonna be a really good one chris rock normally known for his comedy and this time it's going for a serious role and i can i can see he's gonna be tormented i mean he's done serious roles before I and mean, we go back in his career it's been like new jack city where he played a drug addict so he has done them before but in this side of his career, this is going to be the first time really he's done a really serious role that involves no comedy at all. So he's a great comedian. Can he carry a film on its own? I mean, I can see if this is successful, we're going to get a spiral two and three, I'm sure about, I'm sure of that. But it's got, in terms of how this works out first, so spiral coming to the big screens. This may definitely want to watch out for. Now, despite those films I've given you being the three I'm mentioning, there are a couple of other films coming out in May as well that you should keep an eye on. We've got um, Monster on Netflix, which is produced by um, Nas, which is about a young boy who gets accused of a crime he didn't commit, but how the legal system sort of like changes him. It sounds a bit to me like um, Night Of, The Night Of, star them Riz Ahmed. Um, so that one looks like a comedy, quite interesting. We also have um, Those Who Wish Me Dead, starring Angelina Jolie. Um, that's from Warner Brothers, HBO Max sort of jobby. Now, that one, she plays a firefighter who lost someone during a forest fire, can't quite deal with the devastation of the loss, so she's sort of on a bit of a sabbatical, but then comes across a 10-year-old boy, I believe he's 10, who's um, being chased by some 
bad guys. Don't know what it's about, but her job becomes to protect that guy. So you're going to have some action in there. It's a thriller. Um, because she's a firefighter, there's going to be some fires, obviously. But that's, that one looks quite entertaining as well. Um, another Netflix show coming in May is The Woman in the Window, starring Amy Adams. Um, now, this has a all-star cast. Um, most excitedly, Gary Oldman in there as well. And a couple of other big names. And um, that's a woman who is agoraphobic, can't go outside, um, makes a friend, and then watches her murdered from the window. And everyone tries to deny it and make out like she's crazy, but she's short of what she saw. So that's going to be one way it's going to be, did she see it? Is she actually crazy? Or hunting down the murder? Did her husband do it? Who did the murder? It's going to be one of those kind of films, and I actually quite like those kind of films in there. So um, there's a couple of other films I'm sure you could let me know about as well in May. But those are the main ones I think are coming to the screen that we should be watching out for, which means May is going to be an absolutely, absolutely marvellous month for movies. And if you make it back to the cinema, do let me know how it goes for you. Hope you're safe, obviously. Mask where you need to wear a mask. Hope you've had your jabs, whatever you need. Go back, support your local cinemas. And until next month, that'll be Mystery saying, we talk film, come join us.